The intraortic balloon pump is a mechanical circulatory assist device used to support the left ventricle. Counterpulsation refers to balloon inflation during diastole and deflation during systole. Thus, the intraortic balloon pump is timed to the native cardiac cycle. The brains of the intraortic balloon pump is the console. It regulates the inflation and deflation of the balloon by shuffling the gas helium in and out of the balloon chamber. Helium is used because of its low molecular weight, allowing rapid inflation and deflation, and its high dissolubility in blood, mitigating the risk of emboli if the balloon ruptures. There are a variety of indications for the use of the intraortic balloon pump. Prophylactic placement for high-risk patients with critical coronary disease, usually the left main. Unstable angina refractory to medicinal treatment options or hemodynamic compromise prior to urgent therapy. Mechanical complications of myocardial infarction, such as acute mitral regurgitation or ventricular septal rupture. Stunned myocardium. In cardiogenic shock to allow for unloading. Difficulty to wean from bypass, likely from perioperative injury to myocardial tissue and unresponsive to moderate doses of inotropic agents, and bridge to cardiac transplant. The following are contraindications to intraortic balloon pump insertion. Significant aortic insufficiency, since the degree of aortic insufficiency will be increased by the counterpulsation and will hinder the ability of the balloon pump to increase the coronary perfusion and worsen the ventricular distension. Severe peripheral artery disease, as it can result in limb ischemia and aortic dissection or clinically significant aortic aneurysm. The intraortic balloon pump is positioned in the descending aorta, either percutaneously or surgically. Ideally, the tip of the intraortic balloon pump should be 2 cm below the origin of the left subclavian artery and the distal end above the renal arteries. On the chest x-ray, these landmarks can be approximated by assuring that the tip of the balloon pump is seen at or slightly above the level of the carina, between the second and third intercostal space, and at least two centimeters below the aortic knob. A normal arterial pressure waveform is divided up into systole and diastole by the dichrotic notch, which represents the closure of the aortic valves. The intraortic balloon pump console analyzes the arterial waveform in search of the dichrotic notch to know when it's the right time for inflation. When the balloon inflates, an increase in pressure occurs. This is called the augmented diastolic pressure and is responsible for augmenting blood around the aortic arch toward the coronary arteries to promote their perfusion. On the other hand, deflation occurs before the onset of systole and leaves an empty space within the aorta, which allows a struggling heart to pump against low resistance or afterload. Deflation allows the pressure to fall further than its baseline and represents adequate afterload reduction. This is called the assisted end diastolic pressure. Together, these mechanisms allow for an increase in myocardial oxygen supply and a decrease in myocardial oxygen demand. There are three cycles that can be set on the console for the intraortic balloon pump, one to one, one to two, and one to three. One-to-one -one represents inflation and deflation of the balloon pump with every heartbeat. Notice how every beat has an augmented diastolic pressure indicating coronary perfusion and a drop in end diastolic pressure indicating afterload reduction. One-to-two represents the balloon pump inflation with every other heartbeat. Let's analyze. Here we have systole that has not been assisted by the balloon pump. We call this the unassisted systole. With balloon pump inflation, we now see the augmented diastolic pressure because the balloon inflation has augmented the pressure back toward the coronary arteries. As the balloon deflates, the pressure drops below the baseline, signifying the drop in afterload. This is called the assisted and diastolic pressure. Let's look at the next heartbeat. Notice how the systolic pressure in the second heartbeat is lower than the systolic pressure in the first heartbeat. This is because we started heartbeat number two systole at a lower end diastolic pressure from the previous beat. Because the intraortic balloon pump assisted in making the pressure lower, we call this the assisted systole, not to be confused with the unassisted systole. 
Realize that afterload reduction truly occurs when the assisted end diastolic pressure falls below the baseline end diastolic pressure, a phenomenon that can only be appreciated when the balloon pump timing is on 1 to 2 or 1 to 3. 1 to 3 timing refers to balloon inflation every third heartbeat and is mainly utilized for weaning. As you can see, we have the augmented end diastolic pressure, the assisted systole, and the unassisted systole. In addition, we see the balloon pump bead dropping below the baseline, signifying that afterload reduction is occurring. Trigger is the signal the balloon pump uses to identify the next cardiac cycle. It is a deflation signal. When the balloon pump recognizes the trigger event, it will deflate the balloon if not already deflated. There are five different ways to trigger. ECG is the most commonly used and preferable triggering modality. It uses the R wave to trigger balloon deflation. Arterial pressure is a poor alternative because pressure waveform is always slower than electrical waveform. It uses a systolic upstroke of the arterial waveform to trigger deflation. Pacer VAV uses the ventricular pacer spike in V or AV paced rhythms to deflate the balloon. Remember, when 100% paced, there is no reliable R wave. Pacer A uses the R wave to trigger deflation. Internal defaults balloon inflation to 80 beats per minute and is used only during cardiac arrest. Never use in a patient generating their own cardiac output. There are times when the intraortic balloon pump timing is just not right, as evident by an abnormally looking waveform. There are four types of timing abnormalities. Early inflation is inflation prior to the dichrotic notch. The aortic valve closes prematurely Inadequate amount of blood leaves the left ventricle, and thus inadequate coronary perfusion occurs. There is also an increase in afterload. Late inflation is inflation that occurs long after the dichrotic notch and allows too much blood to leave the left ventricle, and thus lessens the diastolic augmentation. Early deflation is deflation that occurs prior to diastole finishing. This results in a loss of the beneficial effects of afterload reduction. Late deflation is deflation that occurs long after and encroaches on systole. This results in an increase in afterload. Due to the invasive nature of the balloon pump, its usage is accompanied by a consistent risk of complications. Here's a list of some of the complications. Limb ischemia, compartment syndrome, infection or sepsis, aortic dissection, balloon rupture, air embolism, thrombosis, aortic valve rupture, hemolysis, acute renal failure, and rhabdomyolysis. Balloon rupture, although it occurs rarely, may lead to entrapment if the diagnosis is delayed.